Hey, the NHL draft has come and gone. The Bruins made a handful of picks, and now we turn our eyes to buyouts, perhaps free agency for sure. And we're going to recap the picks they made and what's next here on a special episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke B as I put my mug back on my desk. It's a daily show, as I mentioned, and uh, I want to thank you so much for being an everyday listener. It really means a lot. It's a fantastic deal. We are free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. And this episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Stay in the game with the eBay Guaranteed Fit at ebaymotors.com. Get the right part for your vehicle. Available only to U.S. customers on eligible items. Exclusions do apply. All right, so this is the second time I've sat down to record today. First was pre-draft, and now we are post-draft. And the Bruins made... A handful of picks that could be something one day. Who knows? We're going to talk about each pick individually here in a moment, as well as take a look ahead at free agency and what Don Sweeney had to say after the draft. Relying here on uh, the work of Scott McLaughlin, WEEI, friend of the podcast. Uh, He's put together some great information on some of these prospects that we'll touch on here. As I mentioned on the previous episode, it really does look like Milan Lucic is going to be signed by the Boston Bruins. Other than that, as we'll discuss later in the podcast, the outlook is not super positive in terms of free agency. But let's start with Boston's first pick at the 2023 NHL entry draft, which was in the third round, pick number 92, Christopher Pelosi, a center from Sioux Falls of the USHL. The immediate reaction was, it was a bit of a reach, perhaps. He was a consensus kind of later round pick. However, Elite Prospects Draft Guide highlights his physicality, net front play as big strengths. He's a nightmare around the net. Combined shooting hand-eye coordination, and overwhelming physicality. He has the skills of a hard-nosed, gritty, lower lineup forward that always receives extra shine in the postseason. Now, again, he wasn't ranked in the top 100 by most draft experts, projected to be a mid-to-late round pick. Mason Lorai, I was reminded on Twitter, was kind of in the same boat. Uh, He's expected to spend another season in the USHL before heading to Quinnipiac in the fall of 2024. So at least three years away from turning pro. Uh, So a bit of a long-term project here in Pelosi. Take that for what you will. There was um, a couple guys that... We're still on the board that I was hoping the Bruins would take. The first was uh, Jaden Perron, who is selected at 94th overall. He played for the Chicago Steel of the USHL. Only 5'9". So, again, Bruins trend bigger. Think Trent Frederick over Alex DeBrinkett a few years ago. But he had 72 points in 61 games. My thing is, just take the best available player. He's described as one of the best passers in the draft. Um, Some risk, but chance for high reward because of his 5'9 frame. And undoubtedly, that's why the Boston Bruins passed on him. I also liked Cam Allen of the OHL's Guelph Storm. Teammates with Matt Quatra, second-round pick of the Bruins last year. Uh, He was the 2022 OHL Rookie of the Year. 
took some steps back and went like 136th overall to the Washington Capitals, a right hand shot defenseman. So following that pick, the Bruins, 124th overall, fourth round, Beckett Hendrickson, a center winger from the U.S. National Team Development Program, a kid of Darby Hendrickson, who's currently an assistant coach with the Minnesota Wild. Again, another big body, six foot two, 174 pound left shot, can play center or wing. Played a bit lower in the lineup, but he was um, had 13 goals, 21 assists in 54 games, seven goals, nine assists in 21 games played against USHL competition. Where maybe the Bruins took Pelosi earlier than expected, they may have gotten some pretty good value here as elite prospects had him ranked 58th. Scott Wheeler of The Athletic had him 95th. Corey Proman of The Athletic 109th. So they got him 124th overall, which is, yeah, decent value there. So good on them for that. He's called one of the most skilled passers in the draft. Uh, could produce more offensively with more minutes and opportunities, something he should get as he will go to Sioux Falls of the USHL this season, where he and Pelosi will be teammates. So that's a nice little connection there. He will play for the University of Minnesota beginning in the fall of 2024. So there you go. Those were the top two picks for the Boston Bruins in this draft. Now, here's the thing. You're picking third, fourth round. It's really a crapshoot. Who knows whether either of these guys will sniff the NHL, much less be regulars for the Boston Bruins at some point. But whereas they reached on one, they got good value on the other. So good on the Bruins there, I guess. We're going to talk about the guys picked in the sixth and seventh rounds here coming up in a minute. But first, a quick word from uh, another one of today's sponsors, our friends over at Athletic Greens. Now, AG1, we've talked about them forever here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, and for good reason. AG1 is a fantastic product, a foundational nutritional supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrients to support whole body health. If Bessie, oh, Bessie's Jason. Now, listen, if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, you can try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL network. And again, it replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and more in one simple drinkable habit. They're raising the standard for quality in the supplement category. Visit drinkag1.com slash NHL network to check it out and take advantage of this fantastic deal where you will get a one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. All right, moving on. Who did the Boston Bruins select in rounds six and seven? Another center taken in round six, pick 188, a young man named Ryan Walsh. He went undrafted in each of the last two years, so he's turning 20 in August. Uh, he did Impressed this past season as a mature prospect, finishing second in the USHL and scoring with 30 goals and 49 assists in 61 games. The only player ahead of him was Macklin Celebrini, and he just so happens to be projected to be the number one overall pick next summer. According to Elite Prospects Draft Guide, they say his game is all about the details and that he wins body positioning around the net, plays a give-and-go style, never hangs onto the puck for too long. His shot is one of his great strengths. And again, as a bit of an, an overager, he could be a bit closer than some of these other guys who uh, were selected earlier on in the draft. In terms of his ranking, not really 
ranked this year because of the fact that he had been overlooked in two past drafts. But uh, Mark Diver saying word on Ryan Walsh is he's not a speedster, but he's very smart, plays with pace, terrific shot, makes plays a winning hockey player. So that's the scoop on Ryan Walsh. Perhaps they can get some value as uh, think of him as like, he didn't go like a, an overage kind of free agent that they're drafting as he is older than your average, average guy is basically the way to look at it. Next up we have in the seventh round, Bruins made two selections. One was their own pick. One was a pick they had grabbed from the Los Angeles Kings last year. The first guy they picked was Casper Nassen. Credit PJ Axelsson out of Sweden for this pick. A right winger from Vasteres in Sweden. A big winger. Seeing a trend here. Six foot four. Led Vasteres with 40 points in 48 games. He was also the team captain for their squad in Sweden's top junior league. He's a 19 year old overager who like Walsh went undrafted last year. He is scheduled to play college hockey for Miami university uh, at Ivan, Ivan, Ivan on Twitter, who some of you may fall follow Robert Chalmers, big guy overager, a long term project for the Bruins in the seventh round. The final pick, 220th overall, Christian Kostadinsky, also from Sweden. Sixth player they've drafted out of Sweden over the past three years, worth noting. He's big. Whoa, trend. Everybody big here. They're trying to erase memories of being pushed around by Matthew Kachuk in the playoffs, I guess. A defenseman. He likes to punish opponents along the boards with his physicality. He's got a long way to go as a skater and a puck handler. So, yeah, take that for what it's worth. The Bruins clearly prioritized sized here. Three guys from the USHL, two from Sweden, five of them picked. They're all at least six foot one or taller. They got mostly centers, trying to restock that position, see if they can Tab someone there that will last long term. Power forward characteristics, playing in front of the net, battling around the net. And then, like Jackson Edward, Ryan Mast a couple years ago, going late for a defenseman that is hulking. Um, Ty Gallagher, another uh, example of that there. So, what do we think of this draft class? Well, it's probably going to be three, four, five, six, never years until we find out if these guys will play at the NHL level. But, you know, it seems as though it was a decent crop with what they had. No first round pick, no second round pick, not really star level potential here, but some guys who could play down the lineup at some point. A lot of them going to university, coming up, and um, probably won't be even in Providence for another couple of years. So that's the thing with the draft. A huge crapshoot. We'll see if some other teams that made some bigger swings, that pays off for them. Montreal really underwhelmed, which we love to see. Didn't take Michkov. And uh, now all eyes turn to free agency. And what the Boston Bruins may do there. And we're going to talk about that after the break. All right. So the draft is out of the way. The Bruins have been not as busy as we perhaps thought they were going to be in advance of free agency. Sure. They traded Taylor Hall to the Chicago Blackhawks as well as the rights to Nick Foligno. Foligno is signed there, and they were able to shed that cap space. Now, there are reports that 
Milan Lucic is going to sign with the Boston Bruins as early as Saturday. And it's likely going to be a short-term deal at low cost. And that's really what all the Bruins can do at this point. Sweeney, after the draft, made it clear, according to Kevin Ball DuPont of the Boston Globe, that he's unlikely to sign any of his unrestricted free agents. That includes Dimitri Orlov, Garnet Hathaway, Tyler Bertuzzi, and a lot of people saying, well, why the heck did they clear Taylor Hall if they're not going to re-sign Tyler Bertuzzi? Well, they still, even by shedding that $6 million, are in a tight cap spot. That would also include Connor Clifton, Thomas Noshik, Patrice Bergeron, David Krejci up in the air. Still have nine roster spots to fill and only about $11 million in cap space. I'm quite surprised that they have not yet traded or bought out a defenseman, namely Matt Grizzlick, Mike Riley, Derek Forbort, not to mention Mitchell Miller, who's still on the books. And there's still some options in terms of clearing off some cap space, buying one of those guys out. The deadline is Friday at 5 p.m., I believe. There will be another buyout window later in the summer, but that will be their best chance uh, right now to get that cleared. There's a trade possibilities. Maybe Brandon Carlo goes. Maybe Matt Grizzlick goes. The options up front are limited as they only have seven forwards on NHL contracts at the moment. And then, of course, there's the possibility of trading a goalie, Linus Olmark, or Jeremy Swayman. Word at the draft is that the Winnipeg Jets were big on Jeremy Swayman, an indication that maybe they're willing to move on from Connor Hellebuck. But the Bruins entertain a Connor, sorry, a Mark Shifley for Jeremy Swayman deal, Shifley being considerably older. As Ty Anderson has said, it's really, really tight. And the Bruins have about $11 million. They have a bunch of restricted free agents. Trent Frederick, Jacob Lauko, Jeremy Swayman. Mark McLaughlin, Kyle Kieser, Michael DiPietro. Defenseman that they acquired this week. Ian Mitchell, Alec Regula, Ryan uh, Walsh. They'll all be tendered qualifying offers. But again, $10.9 million to add seven forwards and a goalie to build what you hope will be a playoff team they can squeak in perhaps make some noise david krejci seems up in the air patrice bergeron who knows what he's thinking more space needs to be made very unlikely as it stands that tyler bertuzzi will will be resigned separate from the taylor hall trade they only had under five million dollars before that trade now only 11 it's still not even really enough to get everybody that they have right now back in the mix. So we'll see what happens here. As I said, I'm recording Thursday afternoon following the draft. And as it stands right now, it looks like they will try to re-sign Trent Frederick, Jeremy Swayman, and surround them with bargain-type free agents. Still hoping somebody moves off the blue line uh, to free up a bit of space. There's no reason to have all these guys on there as it stands. Seven guys making at least, or six guys making at least $3 million. No, that can't happen. You got to get rid of Mike Riley, Forbort, and or Matt Grizzlick, and let Jakobs Borrell play, maybe sign Oliver ekman Larson to a bargain deal. Um, I'm recording this today because Looks like I'm taking tomorrow off. We're heading to the beach. School's over here today. Uh, But if anything significant happens, I'll post uh, a short on YouTube and catch you up on the next official episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. This was a quick draft recap. 
lay of the land heading into free agency. They still have a day to clear some space, 24 hours in fact. Hopefully they exercise some of those options and can get a bit creative, do some work some magic here. Uh, but like I said on the previous episode, willing to let Don cook and see what he has up his sleeve. All right, friends, that's it for today's draft recap episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for being an everydayer. Subscribe so that you never miss a thing. And we'll be back soon to uh, break down what the Bruins start to do in free agency.